So something that is super hydrophobic has a, has a great fear of water, which means it doesn't want to stick to water, or water doesn't want to stick to that material. This causes the water to beat up on the surface, similar to what would happen when you put water in a very hot pan. How do we create the super hydrophobic material? Actually, it is naturally occurring, and that's where we got the idea from. If you look at the, the lotus leaf, which is a, a plant, you look at its microstructure, so the little tiny features of the plant, it has uh, little tiny bumps all over it, uh, different sizes, uh, and it also has a waxy coating over it. So this is where we got the idea for super hydrophobic. Scientists from ORNL developed a glass drawing process which did a differential etch to create very sharp glass peaks. These glass peaks could be varied in size and spacing, and so they replicated the effect of the lotus leaf. We can fit about a million spikes in a square centimeter on a little tiny wafer. This glass was then coated with Teflon, or a Teflon-like material. The coating repels the water, and the spikes push it up. Therefore, it repels the water completely. So it's really the, the combination of the chemistry with the, the geometry of the surface that creates the super hydrophobic property. Uh, now this has a lot of applications, you know, a lot of things are made of glass, but we'd like to have this property on various materials such as cloth, wood, whatever. Major infrastructure that can be helped by super hydrophobics are really any metal structures that come into regular contact with salt water or seawater, things like bridges and ships. They are very prone to rusting and the air barrier formed by super hydrophobics can help prevent that rusting. So what we've done is try to create this very tiny structure in a powder form. So we take this glass that has been etched, has this microstructure, we grind it up into very fine powder, coat it, and now we can apply it to any structure that we want. And these particles made of silica glass are what makes up a lot of our super hydrophobic coatings. This is very useful for a lens that it can be used in uh, wet weather, uh, it can be used where a lot of water is present in high humidity and there will be no sticking of the water. The water will bounce right off while remaining clarity. In electronics where you don't want water to get, it can prevent that, but in pipes where you want it to flow freely, it can help enable that. PVC pipes have a lot of drag between fluids carried through them and the pipe wall itself. This slows down the movement of water. A superhydrophobic coating Will, will eliminate that drag force, allowing water to flow freely through. We've actually coated some fabrics. Uh, this will be very useful for uh, anyone that has to, any kind of work related in you know, uh, water, in oceans, lakes, uh, diving. Uh, for short periods of time, they can be submerged in the water, come up and be completely dry. Concrete and cinder blocks aren't truly waterproof. They, water can seep through them. But a super hydrophobic coating would completely eliminate that problem. I think this place is well suited here at Oak Ridge because it is a multidiscipline facility, multidiscipline lab. And there are many researchers and experienced individuals here that come from very di many different backgrounds to be able to put input and put their mark on this type of technology. In the foreseeable future, super hydrophobics are going to be everywhere. 